Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, this is lesson four, and today we're talking about uh, the idea of indexed sets. Now, before we actually dive into things like definitions and stuff, I just want to talk a little bit about what this is all about. And it's it, the whole reason that we do this is just to make it easier uh, in a particular situation when we're talking about sets. And that situation is the following. Um, suppose that we want to talk about three sets. So if I say I have three sets, then I might call them something like A, B, and C. Okay. That's not a problem. Okay, but suppose that I have 127 sets that I want to talk about. Well, then the question is, what do you refer to them as? Do you call them A, B, C, D, E, F, G? But then you run out of letters. So you start using multiple letters for each set or something like that. Um, instead of doing any of that, what we do instead is, rather than use a different letter for each set, we use a single letter, the letter A, but then we just attach a number to it. So we call the first set A1 and the second set A2 and the third set A3 dot 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 all the way up to A127. And what we've now done is managed to give names to 127 different sets. If I want to talk about a particular set, I can just say, oh, it's set number A89 or A112, etc. Okay. So this is really just a bookkeeping problem. It's really just a problem about how do we keep track when we want to talk about many, many different sets. And the idea is that instead of using different letters, uh, we use this numbering system and we call that number an index. So this number, the one, two, three, etc., each one of these is an index. And if you think of all of them together, they are indices. That's plural. So when we talk about um, uh, a collection of a lot of sets, uh, when we want to refer to them in some kind of a logical way um, by numbering them instead of uh, giving them all different letters, we call those numbers indexes or indices, and we write them as little subscripts after the name of the set itself. Okay. Um, this is the whole idea of indexed sets. And then a lot of what we're going to be doing for the rest of today is working with in, uh, collections of sets that have been indexed, collections of index sets. And um, the main things that we do with collections of uh, sets is we take their union or we take their intersection. So let's just talk a little bit about that. I'll um, run through defi some definitions for you, but then we'll actually dive into examples, and I think that will um, clear things up a bit. So uh, definitions. Well, um, we've already talked about this one. Index sets are sets where we distinguish between the sets by putting numbers, uh, indices, instead of uh, using different letters. Um, and if we want to take the union and the intersection of a whole bunch of sets, uh, just so it's really clear what we mean, if we have a whole bunch of sets, uh, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, dot, 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 and they're all union together, well, what is the result of that supposed to be? Officially, the definition is um, it's a set. So when you take the union of a bunch of sets, the result is a set. And what is that set? Well, it's the set of all things x, such that x is in at least one of the ones that came before. Hmm? x has got to be in ai for at least one set, ai, where i is between 1 and n. It might be that that x is in a1. It might be that it's in a3. It might be that it's in a74. As long as for one of the indices i, it's in ai, then, uh, then it's, we put it into the union. So the union of a bunch of sets is just like the union of two sets. You collect everything that's in all of those sets and put them all together. And then for intersections, we have a similar definition here. If you want to take the intersection A1, intersect A2, intersect A3, intersect dot, 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 all the way up to intersection uh, to the intersection of with AN, this is the intersection of N many different sets. Uh, and what goes into the intersection? Well, in order for... Uh, for a, a member X to be in the intersection, X has to be a member of every single one of those uh, AIs. So for intersections, it has to be in every single one. For unions, it has to be in at least one. 
Okay. That's unions and intersections. And then a lot of the rest of it is just notation, and you're going to find that the notation here is quite similar to the notation, the sigma notation, that we use in numbers when we're adding up a whole bunch of numbers. Um, here we're using a similar notation, but it will be this large union notation. And we say uh, the union from i equal 1 to n of ai, what does that mean? Well, it's just a shorthand way of writing. Um, you need to substitute in for this i right here each of the numbers uh, i from i equal 1 up to i equal n and take the union of those sets. So this is just a shorthand way of writing this, a1, union a2, union a3, union a4, dot, 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 union a n. And it's a similar thing for the intersection. When you have this intersection right here, we have a shorthand way of writing this intersection, which is just the intersection i equal 1 to n of ai. That means uh, a1 intersect a2, etc. Okay, up to an. Okay. So that's the basic idea. Let's go ahead uh, and look down at example number one here. So I'm going to just grab a copy of this um, and uh, pop it in down below. Uh, example one says we're given three sets. Uh, the set A1 is the set containing these three elements, 0, 2, and 5. The set A2 is the set containing these uh, three elements, 1, 2, and 5. And the set A3 is the set containing these three elements, 2, 5, and 7. And this says, find the union, i equal 1 to 3 of AI, and find the intersection, i equal 1 to 3 of AI. And uh, the idea here is, um, is straightforward. We're just going to follow the definitions from above. So when this says uh, the union, i equal 1 to 3, of a i. What does that mean? Well, it means that we have to replace that letter i with each of the numbers 1 up to 3 and then connect them with union. So it's a 1 union a 2 union a 3. That's what it means. And we know what the sets a 1, a 2, and a 3 are. They're given here. And we know that union means we just put in everything that's in all of those sets. So you could pause the video now and just write down what you think that answer will be. Go ahead and do it. Okay, and then uh, you can double check and see how it went here. Uh, here is the union. What do I need to put into this uh, union? Well, I need to put in everything that's in A1, 0, 2, and 5. But I also need to put in everything that's in A2, 1, 2, and 5. Now, look, the 2 and the 5 we've already put in. We don't have to put them in again. It doesn't make any difference whether we write them once or twice. So the only thing really I need to add there is a 1. Um, and then a 3, we need to make sure that 2, 5, and 7 are in there. Now, 2 and 5 are in, uh, are in there already, but 7 is not, so let's add 7 in there. And that's it. That's our union uh, from i equal 1 to 3 of a i. In this case, it's the set containing 0, 2, 5, 1, 7. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the intersection. Here we go. Intersection i equal 1 to 3 of a i is equal to a1 intersect a2 intersect a3. That's just according to the definition of our notation. Um, and when you intersect three sets, the result is going to be a set. So we can start by putting those curly brackets. And then what goes inside that set? Well, what goes inside is only elements that appear in all three of these sets, a1, a2, and a3. So what appears in all of them? A zero appears in A1, but it does not appear in A2 or A3, so we're not going to include zero. Two appears in A1, it also appears in A2, and it appears in A3. So that means that two is in the intersection. Let's go ahead and add that one in. Similarly, for five, five is in A1, five is in A2, and five is in A3. So we're going to put five in there. And if we look at the other uh, things in here, let me see, 2 we've already got, five. the 7 is the only other thing to consider. Now, 7 is in A3, but it's not in A1 or A2. And because of that, we're not going to put it into the intersection. To be in the intersection, it has to be in all of them. So the only uh, members that are in all three of these sets are the number 2 and the number 5. And that is our intersection. Okay, that is the um, uh, basic example, uh, example number one. Um, the only other one, the only other sort of thing to think about here that's going to be useful is um, there's 
in addition to the three sets that we have here that we're unioning up, you can sort of think about uh, another set. It's going to be an important set uh, for us, and it's not going to be one of these three sets. Instead, it's going to be the set of indices. Now, in this example, the indices, I'll uh, circle them, the indices are these numbers, 1, 2, and 3. And so the set of indices is exactly the set 1, 2, and 3. Now, this is very important. When you're dealing with an indexed collection of sets, well, you have those sets, and then you have the collection of their indices, which itself is also a set. This set, the set of indices, in this case, some of the numbers in the set of indices also happen to be in the original sets, like the number one and the number two. Those are indices, and they're also in the sets. Okay, But that is just coincidence in this problem. In general, the things in your set of indices may be completely different from anything that's in any one of the original sets. Yeah. So you don't, um, just because we've used the numbers 1, 2, and 3 as indices doesn't mean that those numbers have to appear in any of these sets. In fact, these could be sets of anything. They don't have to be numbers. They could be sets of letters, or they could be um, sets of pictures, or sets of cars, or whatever. And we could still use the same indices 1, 2, and 3. We would still have the same index set. So the set of indices, we also refer to that as the index set. And the index set goes by the letter i. So for this particular problem, i is equal to that set containing 1, 2, and 3. And just, I, I bring this up not because it's uh, really deep, but just because it's an easy place to get kind of mess, messed up later on. Um, it can be easy to get confused between stuff that's in the set of indices and stuff that's in the actual sets that we're talking about. The set of indices, I think of it as like, it's just like the names that you use for your different sets. Um, or people often refer to it as a bookkeeping uh, tool. It's like for keeping track of your different sets. Um, but uh, that set of indices does not necessarily have to be things that are in your original sets. Okay, um, that's it. We'll come back in the next video and we'll look at some additional examples.